This is Maple Boy, and you're listening to No Boundaries. <laughs> is episode 65 of No Boundaries. Um, yeah, 65. Wow. Uh, no, there's nothing special about 65. Um, anyways, so, uh, today's episode, sorry, that was, like, a really weird, like, intro. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm currently in my car and, uh, sitting outside Starbucks because I'm like, you know what? I always record these episodes inside, why don't I go outside, where it's nice out, and so I'm recording it sort of outside. I'm still in my car, but I didn't want to be outside where there's, like, wind and everything. Today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the differences between bisexual, bisexuality and pansexuality. I got the idea uh, for this show from my friend Heidi. Uh, she had brought it up to me. We were talking about it. And she actually taught me a lot. A lot of this stuff I actually only learned very recently. So it was kind of a learning experience for me as well. Um, so before I get started, I just want to mention um, one thing regarding the episode. I'm going to be using gender as an example of attraction. Um, Obviously, sex and gender are two different things, and people's sex and gender do not always match. So you can be attracted to different sexes, different genders. Um, However, for the sake of, like, confusion and time, I'll just be using gender uh, as an example. And I want to first start off by explaining honestly to you what... I had always thought bisexual and pansexual meant. I thought bisexual meant that you are attracted to either cis men or cis women. For those who do not know, cis means your sex and gender match at birth. So it is the opposite. Cisgender is the opposite of transgender. And I thought pansexual meant that you are attracted to any gender. What I was calling myself was polysexual, which I had learned to mean that you are attracted to various genders, just not all of them. Now, before I continue this episode, before I continue, this episode's in no way to discredit, discredit anyone's definition of anything. This is based on what I've learned in my involved understanding. Um, a lot of this interview, uh, interview, a lot of this info comes from this really awesome PowerPoint. They use my little ponies in it, um, and I will include it in the episode's, uh, link section. So, first let's get some myths out of the way, and we're going to be touching upon these a little bit later on in the episode. Some myths. Bisexuals are confused. Bisexuals just haven't made up their minds. If you claim to be bisexual and marry someone, then you lose that label and must either be straight or gay. Uh, For example, a friend of mine had someone say to her, how can you be bi, you're married to a man. Bisexuality is just an excuse to be slutty. Pansexuals like pans. Pansexuality means you have sex with anything, including animals. So, now let's look at the more evolved definitions. Bisexual is attraction to the same gender as yourself and to different genders. Pansexual is attraction to all genders, or attraction regardless of gender. Um, A better explanation, bisexuals are gender aware, pansexuals are gender blind. So, let's first look at some common questions about pansexuality. And this particular fact does have some problems. Those will come clear as we continue on with the episode. Do pansexuals like everyone? Pansexuals identified people pansexual identified people have the physical, emotional, spiritual capability of falling in love or being with someone regardless of their gender. That doesn't mean they like everyone, and some pansexuals do have physical preferences. 
The identity is used mainly to express the openness and fluidity to people of all genders. How is pansexuality different from polysexuality? Pan means all, while poly means many, and so there are some similar overlaps. A polysexual may be attracted to some gender-variant people, but not have the capability or desire to be with some others. Pansexuals are open to any person regardless of their gender or sex. Aren't pansexuals really just bisexual? Pansexuality is not to be confused with bisexuality, in which bi denotes two genders, male and female, and pan, being all, is open to people who fall at all points or even outside of the gender continuum. All right, so where's the pro so the problem um, is stating that bi denotes two genders, specifically just male and female. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's right because bi means two, so two male female, and pan means all, you know, Latin and everything. So yes, bi does mean two. However, it means two or more genders, as in one your gender, two other genders. So as um, Heidi pointed out, don't think of it as two genders, but rather as two categories. Those two categories, again, being your gender and then other genders. And pan does mean all, so it means all genders. Now, this is where I kind of started getting confused, and I don't blame you if you are, because you're probably thinking, but Mel, I'm confused. You're saying that bisexual is attracted is attraction to your gender and other genders, and pansexual is attraction to all genders. How is that different? Again, pansexual is all is all genders because they are gender blind. Um, this is not to say that pansexuals are attracted to every person they meet, as described in the FAQ. Um, bisexuals, I guess you could say, are more picky. Someone who's bisexual is attracted to their own gender and other genders, but that doesn't mean every gender. For example, I'm attracted to cis men and women, trans men, androgynous women, um, bi-gender women, and some other identities. I am not, however, attracted to, say, trans women. Now, before you start flipping out, saying I'm transphobic, I'm not saying that I wouldn't be friends with them or they aren't awesome. I'm saying that I personally do not have a physical attraction. I also don't have a physical attraction to black guys. However, we're not talking personality. We're talking pure, pure physical attraction. I'm sure there are plenty of trans people who are not attracted to cis white women or Chinese men not attracted to Japanese women or bi-gender women not attracted to men from San Francisco Whatever. The point is, just because someone is not attracted to a certain gender, it does not make them a bad person. And that's where, that's what bisexual is, is you are gender aware and you do have your preferences. So gender does play a role in who you are attracted to. So now what about polysexual? Now, according to Wiki, and I know I promise you guys I wouldn't use Wiki. I'm really sorry. Polysexuality is the attraction to multiple genders and or sexes. A polysexual person is one encompassing or categorized by many different kinds of sexuality. Polysexual is a sexual identity used by people who recognize that the term bisexual refines the gender dichotomy and underlies the distinction between heterosexuality and homosexuality, implying that bisexuality is nothing more than a hybrid combination of these gender and sexual dichotomies. Dichotomies? I never know how to say that word. Um, basically, because people out there think there are only two genders and sexes, and that gender and sex are the same, then bisexual means literally an attraction to just cis men and cis women. They use the term polysexual. They use the term polysexual because poly means many. So now this will lead to the question: What is the difference between bisexual and polysexual? Technically, nothing. Why? Because the definition of bisexual is outdated. You do a Google search and you will most likely get bisexual being described as attraction to men and women. Only most of them mean cis men and women. Thus, a lot of people that could identify as bisexual use the term polysexual so as not to deal with the stigma. Um, this is Now, this is not to say that one term is better than the other or that you have to even use any term. Uh, one Tumblr user breaks it down like this. Polysexual people are attracted to multiple genders. Pansexual people are attracted to all genders. 
The most inclusive definition of bisexual bisexuality is the same as the definition of polysexuality, so bi could work too. So polysexual and bisexual are indeed um, synonymous. Personally, I feel the binary definition of bisexual comes from our society not fully understanding there is more than two genders and sexes. Polysexual is the new way of saying bisexual, neither is right or wrong. Transcending Boundaries has a pamphlet called Bi Pan Fluid 101, um, and one of the questions that it asks is, what's the difference between bisexual, pansexual, and other labels? Um, and the answer they give is, good question, it depends on who you ask. Bisexual, pansexual, fluid, omnisexual, sapiosexual, multisexual, queer, some people claim multiple labels and use them interchangeably. Other maintain that, that bisexuality refers only to those attracted to both men and women, whereas pansexuality refers to sexual attraction, regardless of person's gender. Fluid is sometimes used to refer to sexuality that seems to change with time. Most organizations use the word bisexual to refer to all mono, non-monosexual identities, as it is the most established of all the myriad labels. The most important thing to remember, however, is, it is to respect each person's individual self-identification, however they define it. Um, and the problem I see with saying that bisexual is referring to both men and women is, are they saying cis men and women? Because not all men and women are cisgender, so it's not very specific. Um, now, I had mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I mentioned some myths about bisexuality and pansexuality and I wanted to talk a bit about phobia and invisibility and again this information comes from this handy handy little pamphlet from Transcend Boundaries um, and they do get I'll put all the links uh, for where they get their information from like by Net USA, um, by Social News, by Resource, um, I will link those all. So by phobia Biphobia is discrimination against bisexuals, pansexuals, and other non-monosexuals. Um, and it's based on fear and or misunderstanding. It's a problem specified to bi pan people and exists in both the straight and the gay lesbian communities. In the past, many of the biphobic people have been, in fact, gay or lesbian. Because of this, bisexuals have had struggle struggle for the past 30 years to include with gays and lesbians in the gay rights movement and queer community. Many lesbians feel betrayed by bisexual women who slept with the enemy and didn't have the courage to become real lesbians. Many gay men felt that bisexual men were only out for a good time and were not really one of them. Although this attitude has diminished greatly due to the tireless work of bisexual, pansexual, and allied activists, biphobia amongst gay men and lesbian women does still exist. In fact, a good portion of bi pan fluid activism is actually still aimed at educating the gay and lesbian community. Um, I'm going to continue on with some myths. So, some common myths, and I may repeat some. They are confused and can't make up their mind. They are really gay, lesbian, and can't admit it. They are really just straight people trying to be trendy. They can't be monogamous. They will always leave someone of the same sex for a partner of the other sex. They are all promiscuous. They are just going through a phase. They can't be trusted. They give ace to straight women and lesbians. They can't really be queer. They are attracted to anyone and everyone. A person has to be equally attracted to men and women to be bisexual. Bipan fluid people are always available. Now, some examples of biphobia. Assuming that everyone, everyone one meets is either heterosexual or homosexual. Supporting and understanding a bipan fluid identity because you identified it that way before you became came to your real lesbian, gay, heterosexual identity. Assuming a bipan fluid person could want to fulfill one's sexual fantasies or curiosities. Using the terms phase or stage or confused or fence sitter or bisexual or ACDC or switch hitter as slurs or in an accus accusatory way. Not confronting a biphobic remark or joke for fear of being identified as bisexual. Thinking that bi pan fluid people will have their rights when lesbian and gay people win theirs. 
being gay or lesbian and asking your bisexual pansexual friend about their lover only when the lover is the same sex gender expecting bi pan fluid activists and organizers to minimize their issues and prioritize the visibility of lesbian and or gay issues avoiding mentioning to friends that you are involved with the bisexual pansexual or working with the bisexual group because you're afraid they will think you're bisexual um so invisibility our society tends to assume everyone is heterosexual until proven homosexual Two people in an other sex relationship are assumed to be straight. Two people in a same sex relationship are assumed to be gay or lesbian. The truth is, however, that a person is either of these relationships, in either of these relationships, could be bisexual, pansexual, and this possibility is rarely recognized in general society. Bi pan flu people are constantly rendered invisible by the very language often used to describe non heterosexual people gay and lesbian. Implicit in this language is the idea that anyone attracted to members of the same sex are either gay or lesbian. Since gay and lesbian is the standard term to use in mainstream media, bisexuals and other non-monosexuals are rendered invisible almost every time same-sex loving gay issues are mentioned. The frequent use of the term gay marriage serves as an example. Bisexual pansexuals are frequently rendered invisible in history as well. Historical figures known to have had same-sex intimate relationships are usually portrayed as gay or lesbian, when in fact many had intimate relationships with persons of various genders. By taking the gay-straight dichotomy in which our society believes and applying it to historical figures, bisexuality has become obscured not only in the present, but in the past. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the Kinsey scale, and I have mentioned the Kinsey scale um, in a previous episode. The Kinsey scale attempts to describe a person's sexual orientation using a scale from 0 to 6. 0 meaning exclusively heterosexual, 6 meaning exclusively homosexual, and 1 to 5 meaning bisexual to one degree or another. Today, many see the Kinsey scale as overly simplistic, suggesting that sexual orientation and sexual identity are more complex and varied. Still, many bisexuals use the Kinsey scale to describe the idea of sexuality as a spectrum or continuum rather than a set of, than a set of categories. Um, so I hope that this has given you a better understanding of the difference between bisexual and pansexual. The important thing to remember is that people may use the terms interchangeably. I know I use bisexual and polysexual interchangeably. Um, some may use the old school definition of bisexual. Some may use entire different words. If it gets confusing, just remember that people are people and see past their sexual orientation. It's nice to want to be educated, but don't spend all your time trying to understand just one aspect of a person. Um, Now, I do have a couple of announcements before I end this episode. Um, I want to do a QA and a video. I know I've asked people to ask me questions. So please, if you have any questions for me, it doesn't have to be about um, my episodes. It can be about me personally. Um, You can ask me advice on something, whatever your little heart desires. Uh, Send those questions to No Boundaries Podcast, the number four at gmail.com. Again, that's No Boundaries Podcast four at gmail.com. You can also facebook message me or twitter me um all the info is on my website which i will give before the end of the episode um next thing my book is out i don't know if i mentioned this last episode but i have a sci-fi um young adult novella called absorb and it is now out you should go check it out um if you go to my website there's a link to buy it and, you know, you can read the description. If you go to facebook.com slash absorb mel, you can like it, um, like the page and whatnot. I will include links and everything. Um, and my final announcement is I, so I recently got a new job. Yay! Um, and I'm very excited about it. Um, however, my schedule varies from week to week and I do work. 15 hour days um some days so in the future i'm not sure how soon um the next couple of weeks i should be fine but um 
I may not be doing a... I'll still be doing weekly shows, but they may not be coming out on the same exact day. Um, If you're listening to this and it's not Monday, it means it's Sunday, and so you figured out that um, I did this on Sunday. Uh, I'm putting this episode out on a Sunday just because I want to see um, if it increased my listenership, Um, but in the future, I more than likely won't be putting out the shows every Monday or Sunday. It will vary depending on my work schedule that week and when I am home um, because if I have to work two 15-hour shifts on Sunday and Monday, I can't very well um, put out a uh, an episode. And so finally... Next week, what are you doing next week? Next week, I am talking about asexuality. And asexuality is something I learned about, and I remember it was a while ago, and I remember just not being able to wrap my brain around it, like, at all. I'm like, WTF, I don't understand this. Uh, So... Um, it'll be interesting, and I finally, I want to thank Heidi for giving me the idea, uh, for this episode, it was definitely a really big help, you can check out the website, www.noboundriespodcast.com, all the links to everything, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, blog, everything's there, check it out. Thank you guys so much. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next week. Mwah. No boundaries. Get real, get raw, get sexy. Thanks for listening.